Hello and welcome back to another video. I just want to put out a quick apology beforehand. I am a little bit sick so I may not sound as clear or I may sound a little bit stuffed than I normally do. So just putting that out there, I, I don't mean, you know, to make it hard to understand or to hear me. Without further ado, let me tell you what we're getting into today. So today is going to be a variety of things and it's such a broad spectrum. Normally I try to narrow down things very specifically, but since this all uses the exact exact same technique, the possibilities are absolutely limitless, from moving a normal maps, to moving emissions, to color shifting emissions, to moving main textures, is the kind of broad spectrum that I'm going to go in, but I promise once I get into this video, it'll be narrowed down very quickly for you, for you to understand what you want to do. Without further ado, let's get into even more basics because where would we be without me stating the normal. Today we are using Unity 2019, but please keep in mind this is also cross compatible with Unity 2018. This technique I'm specifically showing you is made for Poyomi. I am using Poyomi 6.1, although please try to use the most recent Poyomi versions for the best result. I do not know if this works with any earlier version than 6.1, but again, try upgrading or shader to recent versions for the best result. I do not have enough experience with Quest compatible shaders to know that if this works with Quest avatars, so Quest users, I apologize, this probably isn't the tutorial for you. And the avatar we have here is Rosie by Food, aka Roseflower, which will be linked in the description below. <sighs> Alright, now we can get into the nitty gritty type of things. Now, what do I mean by like moving a mission or color shifting a mission? Well, if we go to the back here, we can look at this tattoo right here and we can tell that it's shifting through the colors. As you can see, it's not just an emission where an emission normally stays one color and either scrolls through the one color or blinks the one color or glows the one color. It is shifting through all colors of the rainbow. Getting this technique is very, very easy and with, you know, you're going to click on the material that you want to do with this. You're going to scroll down until you find special effects. Make sure that layer is dropped down and then find a mission. Make sure a mission is checked off. Now there's a few things we want to keep in mind before we get started here. You want to have an image already pre-chosen. Head on to Google, this can literally be any image in the world, head on to Google and find yourself an image you want your tattoo to move through or your material to move through. This can be rainbows, this can be galaxies, this could even be a textured um, image. But there's a few things to keep in mind when picking your image. Make sure colors are saturated or more vibrant. Why, you may ask? I find with the brighter, the more pastel-y things, the more washed out when pulling it onto an avatar looks and the less the effect is showing. So where if you have a very just pastel, like colors are blending together type of image, it's not going to show up well on your avatar. This is about as pastel as I could get it before it started looking washed out and not visible. If you are looking for it to shoot, uh, Sh like schmove through like a texture that is very grainy or a metal or just any type of like tactile uh, image by tactile I mean if you could feel it you could visibly feel that texture that we want to make sure that that texture is very prominent that you can very much see it because if it's a subtle texture again it's not going to show up as well unless it is a normal map that being said, once you have that image, you are going to put it into Unity. So simply drag it from your folder into any one of these folders you have in your Unity project where you are going to remember it. From there, you are going to drag and drop your image into a mission map. Now what the emission map is, is um, it's mapping out what your emission is going to scroll through. It's saying this is what we need to follow in order to scroll through it. So we're going to put this into a mission map. Second off, does our material need a mask? If you do not know what a mask is, try checking out my previous uh, tutorial about matte caps and tattoos and stuff like that, where I go into depth of how to make maps or what a map is. If I'm going to go over like a brief explanation right now, if you already know how to do this, feel free to skip ahead. So a map is like a painting. Um, 
a mask, my apologies, is like a painting. Imagine you're painting on a wall and you want to mask out the wall itself. The borders of the wall you're going to take masking tape and ma uh, mask out. It is the same thing for a mask. Imagine the black being your tape, so everything you are taping over is going to be black, and the white is the part you are specifically going to paint. So everything that you want color to stay on or the emission to stay on, you are going to want white, for example, you are going to want white or black or transparent is going to be the background but you are going to have this tattoo white to say hey this is exactly what I want to be mapped out or masked out the background has to be either black or transparent I've tried darker colors but this can be a very mixed thing sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't the best result is a black and white now, now that we have that set and we figured out whether or not we need a mask or not, we are going to go into what's called panning. This technique is not done through scrolling emission, which some people might thought because it's scrolling through, but a scrolling emission normally works through one solid color. But looking at this, we can pull down a mission map, and what we are going to see is tiling, offset, and panning. The only two things I'm going to focus on right now are tiling and panning. Now, what is tiling? Imagine you're looking at a kitchen floor and each tile is an image. The smaller the tiles are, the more images there are, but the more you may be able to see the crevices between each tile. The bigger the image is, the more blurry or the longer it may take to shift through colors, but the less lines in between. If you watch my tattoo carefully, occasionally here and there you will see a line shift through. That's because my tiles are relatively large and it's finally hitting the edge of the line of the image. Now we need to make sure our emission strength is one if it isn't already. I mean you can make this as bright as you want but one is a good starting point. Next once we have our tiling set up whether or not we want more tiles or less tiles or you zoom out of the image look at that and we have color shifting. Once we have our tiling put out, we are going to look at panning. There is an X and a Y axis. Now, anyone who's been to school exactly knows what the X and Y axis is. The Y axis is our vertical and the X axis is our horizontal. So left, right, up, down. Now, our X axis is going to be going from left to right. So do we want this image scrolling to the side versus how much we want this image scrolling down? So if I was to take away the one from the Y, my image would only scroll from side to side. There would be no image coming down ever. But if I put it to a one, each of it's going both places where it's going left to right and occasionally an image will come down as you can see right here. Now, the more we put it on, the x-axis is the faster it's going to scroll. So I could make this literally 20 and flash people with that. But because I want it to be a slow shift, we can put it to 1 or 2. Now that's color shifting or material shifting emissions. Next, we are going to talk about normal maps. Normal maps, in case you didn't already know, is what provides a material texture. This is normally done through either Blender or Substance Painter. There are other methods to getting a normal map done, but it is what makes the texture of a material 3D. So it's no longer just an image. A normal map will look like this mess, but it's what able to make something 3D. So if I turned up the normal intensity, the more textured it becomes, and if I look for through to the side, it's an actual 3D texture. Now, I'm going to make this normal map very, very prominent, just so you can see exactly what I'm about to do here. So remembering back to the scrolling through emission, we pull down this little arrow beside normal map and we see the exact same thing, tiling, tiling offset, and panning. So the more tiles there is, the smaller the normal map becomes, but we'll keep it one to one just to keep it even. But going back to panning, the moment I touch this and I move it to one, our image starts 
panning due to the way each uh, clothing article or material or item is mapped within blender can obviously uh, differentiate the way this is going to move where people are like well this one's going up and down but we only affected the x-axis that's because of the way that this was mapped within the program so if I'm moving this to y this is now going side to side and these are going up and down. That's exactly how we make the moving normal map. Now, this same exact thing applies when it comes to main textures. I don't exactly have a main texture here that is not just a solid color. I could probably put this in. I definitely can't. But if you have a texture that is, you want it to shift between, again, another Google image or you want it to start scrolling through, the same material or the same method is applied right here, the panning and the tiling. You can apply this to so much, although these are the three things that are the easiest to do it with, and you can just have it pan through any image, any color, gradients, whatever you'd like. I really hope this helps spark some creativity and have a great day.